In this demonstration, we'll show you the power of Maple for extracting mathematical information from a SysML2 model, and then perform a series of analyses on the model. The example model we're using is of a multi-stage jet engine, and we're going to perform a thermodynamic analysis of the air-fuel mixture as it goes through each stage. The goal of the analysis is to calculate the specific fuel consumption as a measure of performance, given a set of operating conditions. And this can be used to verify that the proposed design will fulfill the operational requirements of the engine. The SysML2 model resides on a server as a web service. In order to connect to the model, we're using Maple's open API capability. This is a YAML configurable interface, and we're using the YAML file that's been published on the Swagger site for the SysML2 API. Using this and our Maple tools, we can generate the necessary interface code to connect Maple to the SysML model. We'll now use this interface to open a channel to the gas turbine model on the SysML2 server and log in with our credentials. We can extract some or all of the system model and hold it in a JSON structure so we can explore any aspects of the model in Maple. In this case, we'll focus on extracting all mathematical relationships, such as equations and parameter assignments. So, here we see all the SysML elements in the model, but we specifically extracted only elements that contain mathematical expressions. This includes assignments of numeric values with our engineering units to the known parameters. Also, the SysML2 calculation usage elements in the model can be used to direct the analysis. Now we have, in a very raw form, all the information Maple needs to set up and perform the analysis. Maple's powerful symbolic technology can be used to combine all the relationships and simplify them down to the equations needed for the calculations. Moreover, until we know what the known variables are and what we're solving for, these expressions are simply a causal relationships. The advantage of this is that the relationships can be held in the SysML model in any form without having to worry about what we're going to be using it for. It's only at this point where we can use Maple to define the causality given the inputs and outputs in order to perform the analysis. So now we need to define what the inputs of the equations are going to be and what variables we're going to solve for as outputs. However, in a complex model, how do you know if you have all the necessary relationships and data to perform the analysis? Maple provides tools to assess the determinism of the equation set by returning the number of equations and the number of unknown variables. In fact, we can see with this model, the problem is underdetermined because there are more unknown variables than equations. Not only that, Maple can identify which variables are missing. For now, we'll assign values to these unknowns, but the systems engineer will need to be informed of the missing information in order to update the model. Now we have all the equations and parameters we need to calculate all the intermediate and output values. But first, let's focus on the power of Maple's processing of engineering units. First, we can test the unit's consistency using Maple's dimensional analysis capability. In this case, we'll assign some values to the input variables and run the analysis with the causalized equations. Immediately, we see an error that indicates there are incompatible unit dimensions in the data. Not only that, it indicates the equation where the error occurred, which allows us to investigate the cause. In fact, we can see straight away that this was caused by us neglecting to assign units to the input temperature and pressure. If we re-execute with the appropriate units, we get the results for all the unknown variables in the model. Now, we may only be interested in a subset of these variables. For example, we may want to examine the fuel consumption, the engine thrust, and specific fuel consumption, or SFC. Here we see the results for these variables only with their derived units. Note that results may not appear in the units we expect. In this case, we expect the SFC to be in kilogram per hour per newton thrust. We can simply convert it to display those units. Furthermore, since we're only interested in the SFC for this analysis, we can use Maple to identify the equations needed to calculate the SFC and eliminate the rest. This helps to reduce the computational burden by removing all redundant operations. Now that we've tested a single pass calculation for the SFC, we can pack this up as a Maple procedure that can be used over and over again. Maple has tools for automating this process and provides a simple function call with, in this case, three arguments for the operational inputs. But it doesn't stop there. 
If you want to use this calculation repeatedly, say for parameter sweeps or optimizations, Maple provides some very powerful automated code generation tools. In this case, we're generating C code from the Maple procedure that can be compiled and executed in Maple. This function is now very fast and can be used for further analysis, such as optimization or sensitivity studies as we see here. Again, this can be used within Maple or passed on as a parameterized executable for use elsewhere in your toolchain.